You just did the deepest voice. What like was that voice? DJ. How did you do oh that? Oh my gosh, Very no. White. I can do Mickey Mouse and this deep voice. Okay, so it's kind give of like me, a, first give me Mickey. Oh my God, it's so much pre- Oh boy. <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. Wait, are you- Hi, pal, it's me. Mickey. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we're gonna to be talking about some more conspiracy theories. Okay, so I have fallen down a hole recently looking at conspiracy theories about kids' toys, and there are some fucking crazy ones. Now, some I've talked about before. For example, some people thought back in the day that Furbies were actually recording all of our conversations and sending them to the government, which sounds crazy, except for the creator of Furby admitted that Furbies do record what you say because it's taking it in to learn how to talk back. Another conspiracy theory that we've talked about is that Leapfrog is actually owned by Apple. And if you don't know what Leapfrog is, basically Leapfrog creates these like fake Mac products for children. There's like an iPad and a laptop and a fake iPhone. And some people think that Apple created all of that to get little kids interested in iPhones and iPads and laptops so that when they're old enough, they'll buy an Apple. Now those two aren't that crazy, but these next ones are. Now there's a theory that some kids' toys that talk are actually saying subliminal messages to your kids. And some of them aren't even subliminal. Some of them you can literally just hear. Now this first one is the latest and probably the biggest controversy about kids' toys. And that is that Hatchimals, which are the newest toy right now, actually cuss. So Hatchimals are these like little talking birds and other animals that come inside of an egg and they hatch out of the egg and then they don't shut the fuck up <laughs> for like the entire time you own them. Now when this toy came out, a lot of parents started noticing that the Hatchimals started saying things in its sleep that did not sound kid friendly. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they think it's saying. I'm going to let you decide that for yourself. Check it out. Did you hear it? <laughs> Listen, if you didn't hear it, then maybe it's not dirty. I fucking heard it. Now, what the parents think it's saying is, fuck me, over and over again. Now that you know that, listen again. I know, it's pretty fucking crazy. Like, I literally hear that animal saying fuck me. I heard it saying fuck me when I was watching an unboxing of it, and I was like, did that animal just say fuck me? Also, don't ask why I was watching an unboxing of the toy. It's a long story. Now, so many parents complained that this story kind of went viral, it was on the news, and the company in charge of Hatchimals came out and said, no, it is just saying hug me. We would never have our toys cuss. But this is not the first time this has happened. This literally happens all the time. Just a year ago, McDonald's released a Minions toy Toy that a bunch of parents complained about because they said they heard it saying, what the fuck, over and over again. Watch. <laughs> now, of course, McDonald's came out and said, no, 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 that's not what it said. It was just gibberish. But sometimes toys say something that sounds so clear that the people in charge have to be like, fuck. The worst one was back in 2011 when Toys R Us was selling this talking baby doll and it said, you crazy bitch. Check it out. Yeah, that literally said crazy bitch. Like it actually, without a doubt, <laughs> said that. Okay, crazy bitch. And so many parents complained and Toys R Us heard it themselves too, so they pulled it off the shelves. Now some toys don't just say bad words, but they can get you to create a bad word. For example, all those baby toys that are like phones with numbers, if you put the numbers in the right order, you might get a secret message. Let's call our friends. Not the So now that you've heard all these toys cussing, the theory basically is that the toy companies are owned by something bigger, maybe the Illuminati. And the point is to brainwash your kids and send them subliminal messages of bad words, of sex, of wanting the money, of wanting power. Literally the whole point of giving your kids toys is to fill their brains with things that you want them to know. I mean, it sounds crazy, but is it? I mean, my parents never cussed around me, so how did I learn how to cuss at such a young age? I don't know. All I know is when I'm a parent, my kid's playing with a fucking lemon <laughs> or a fucking banana, and that's it. Okay, so this next conspiracy theory is kind of touchy, and it is really intense, and that is the theory that Michael Jackson was actually 
So as you guys know, back in 2009, Michael Jackson died of an overdose of propofol. The doctor who gave it to him's name was Conrad Murray, and he was charged with killing Michael Jackson. Mainly because a doctor should know not to give somebody that much of that medicine, and he gave him too much. But there's a theory that Conrad was kind of the scapegoat, and that somebody else wanted to murder Michael Jackson, and they used Conrad to do it. Now our first piece of evidence comes from Paris Jackson, who is Michael Jackson's daughter. Now before we get started, I just want you guys to know that I am not trying to exploit Michael Jackson. This isn't about me like making some crazy story up about his death. I truly do believe that there is more to the story of his murder than we know, and I really fucking want justice for it. I also have a personal connection to Paris, his daughter. We know each other and we talk. And um, after she came out in this interview and said this stuff, I was like, fuck it, I'm making a video. I've wanted to talk about this for a long time. Let's do it. So first let's talk about what she said in Rolling Stone magazine. She said he would drop hints about people being out to get him, and at some point he was like, they're gonna kill me one day. Then they asked her if she thinks he was murdered, and she said, all arrows point to that. It sounds like a total conspiracy theory, and it sounds like bullshit, but all the real fans and everybody in the family knows it. It was a setup. It was bullshit. Now, Paris isn't the first person in the Jackson family to say that they think Michael was murdered. His sister Latoya did an interview not too long after he died, and she said some pretty scary shit. Do you think Michael do you think it's murder? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I said it in the beginning and I, I believe it to this day. You must remember Michael told me repeatedly that they were going to kill him, that he was going to die. And who did it? Pretty fucking creepy. And then it gets even creepier. They murdered my brother, and they know who they are. It's not just Dr. Murray, I promise you that. It's more people involved, and they know exactly who they are, and I'm gonna let you guys know exactly what's happening and what's going on. And then she alludes to the fact that there might be a lot of people involved, which kind of sounds like the Illuminati. Check it out. So there are people in the background? There are people in the pulling background. Pulling strings? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now that we've heard his own daughter and his own sister say that they think he was murdered, let's talk about the theories as why somebody would murder him. Now the first theory is AEG. Now AEG is a company that promotes concerts. And before he died, Michael Jackson was going to go on his final tour called This Is It, and AEG was in charge of promoting it. Now, a lot of people think that AEG knew that Michael was sick and that his health was not good enough to do this tour. And people think that they pushed him too hard and that's what led to his death. Here's what Paris said about that. AEG Live does not treat their performers right. They drain them dry and work them to death. Now, AEG does a lot of concerts, including Justin Bieber's, and Paris had something pretty scary to say about that too. Now, she went to one of Justin Bieber's concerts and she said this afterwards. He was tired, going through the motions, I looked at my ticket, saw AEG live, and I thought of how my dad was exhausted all the time but couldn't sleep. So she's insinuating that AEG is working Justin to death now and that maybe he could end up being the next victim. Now a source close to Justin heard that Paris said this and came out and said this. Justin is not at all scared or overworked. He's in the best health and state of mind he's ever been in. Bitch, what? <laughs> Listen, it does not take a conspiracy theorist to call bullshit on that one. Best state of mind he's ever been in, I can't even. That to me sounds like somebody doing some fucking damage control. Now just to show even more what AEG has been through, they also are being sued by Christina Grimmie's family um, because they did not give the proper security for her concert, which led to her death. So obviously I'm not going to go too much more into that one because I just I can't because I'll fucking cry, so we're gonna move on. Now the next theory of who murdered him is possibly the people that were doing business around him. Now Michael Jackson owned a lot of shit. I mean, he owned the whole entire catalog for the Beatles. He owned his own music catalog. He had Neverland Ranch. He had a lot of money. So some people think that his business advisors and people around him wanted him to die so that they could get and maybe they hired Dr. Conrad and paid him off to slowly kill Michael. And the last theory is obviously the biggest one and the creepiest one, and that is that Michael was killed by the Illuminati. Now listen, this one sounds crazy, but is it? I mean, Michael became so famous when he was a kid, then he became even more famous as an adult. Then he started speaking out about the music industry and saying he wanted to rebel and saying he didn't want to do what they wanted him to do, and then they got pissed. Then all these controversies came out about him, things I don't want to bring up, but you know what I'm talking about. 
So maybe the Illuminati was trying everything they could to ruin his career because they knew that he might speak out against them. So hopefully we will know soon, hopefully we can help, and hopefully we can finally get justice for her dad. All right, so let's move on to a conspiracy theory that's a little lighter, but also still fucks me up. <laughs> And that is the theory that Jack Dawson from the Titanic is also Jay Gatsby from The Great Gatsby. Okay, I know, it sounds crazy, but it actually kind of makes sense. All right, so Jack Dawson was a poor guy who won a ticket onto the Titanic in 1912. He attends the first class dinner, he's hanging out with all the fancy people, he starts to like it. Then he gets in trouble for stealing Rose's diamonds, which he didn't do, although we never saw that, so maybe he did. Then, what if he survived? You know, like we saw him float down, but what if his heart started again? What if he survived? What if he got on land, pawned all the diamonds, got a bunch of money, then spent the next 10 years building up his business, building up his wealth, and then in 1922, 10 years later, becomes the Great Gatsby. And by the way, has a shady past that he doesn't like to talk about, and has a fear of swimming pools and water. <laughs> I know, that one is pretty fucking stupid, but it is crazy to think about, like, what if that is in the same universe? Because the timeline makes sense, his age makes sense, and personality-wise, they were pretty similar. Okay, speaking of movie conspiracies, this next one is actually really interesting, and I really fell down a hole reading about this one. And that is the theory that the character Riley from Inside Out is actually bi-gender. Okay, so as you guys know, the movie Inside Out is about a little girl who's going through a lot, and she's dealing with a lot of emotions, and we see inside of her head her emotions. We see anger and sadness and whatever. Now the emotions in her head are male and female, and then later on in the movie you see the emotions in the dad's head. And check those out. With a nice pass over the reef, comes across that right. Right, they're all male. Now what about the mom's emotions? Did you guys pick up on that? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Sure did. Yeah. Something's wrong. Should we ask her? Okay, wait. So the dad's emotions are all male. The mom's are all female. So then wouldn't Riley, who's a female, have all female emotions? So maybe she's dealing with both gender emotions. And maybe that's the reason she's going through so much. Maybe she's figuring out her gender. Because later on in the movie, when you see a boy at the hockey game, he has all male emotions. And then you see a goth girl, she has all female emotions. Riley is the only character in the movie so it kind of makes you think, maybe she is dealing with a lot. Maybe when they make another Inside Out, it'll deal with transgender or something like that. I don't know, I think it could be pretty interesting. And also, I'm kind of surprised that not that many people are talking about that. Okay, so this next theory I'm gonna talk about is really fucking creepy. And it literally kept me up at night. And that is a theory that there is a man who all of us see in our dreams and he looks the same to everyone. So before I show you a picture of this man, I'm going to give you a little background. So back in 2006, a therapist was asking her clients to draw this man that they've been seeing in their dreams. She had multiple clients who drew the same face. Then this started to go viral, and a lot of people said that they saw this man in their dreams. And in the last 10 years, over 2,000 people have said that they've seen him. And it's probably a lot more. A lot of people probably just don't know about this theory. And I'm just gonna let you guys know that I didn't know about this theory either. And then when I saw this picture, it fucking blew my mind because I have been seeing this man in my dreams since I was a kid. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the picture and you guys let me know down in the comments if you have ever seen him. Here he is. I know, fucking creepy. And if you're like me and you've seen him before, you're probably fucking going nuts right now. Now this is a very, very real thing. So many people have drawn the picture of this man to the therapist or to their friends. Just check out some of these pictures that people have drawn. Yeah, these are all different people who drew the same man. Okay, so here's some of the theories as to why we might be seeing this man in our dreams. Now, one theory is that this man is an image of God, and that God is putting himself in our dreams, but making himself look like a person so we can talk to him. Now, this one makes sense to me because in my dreams, that man has given me advice, and also sometimes he's just watching. And a lot of other people have said that that's what happens to them too. He just watches over them. Now, the next theory is pretty scary. That is a theory that this is a real man. He exists in real life, and he has the power to go into strangers' dreams. Now, some people also think that this real man might be in charge of a corporation or Illuminati, and he is going into everybody's dreams to give them subliminal messages. 
messages. Now the idea of somebody going into another person's dream isn't that crazy. I mean, if you believe in astral projection, then why wouldn't you believe in going into somebody else's subconscious? But it's still fucking scary to think about. And the last theory is the least scary one. And that is that this man is just a very generic looking man. And in our dreams, our brain can't really create like a new unique person. So it just creates the most generic looking face it can which could be this man, and which could be why we all see him. But whatever the theory is, it doesn't change the fact that he's literally everywhere. I mean, just look at all these pictures from around the world of people posting, have you seen this man, posting his face everywhere. It's pretty fucking creepy. I don't know, fucking scares me. Have you ever seen that man? All right, so the next theory is about the author of the Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling. And I feel like I might have touched on this one before, but now I have some more evidence, which I thought was kind of interesting. The theory is that J.K. might not be who we think she is. Now we all know the story. She was a poor woman who was writing a book in a coffee shop on a napkin and then that turned into the Harry Potter franchise, which is a very inspirational story. But is it possible? Well, a movie director named Nina Grunfield doesn't think it is. So she thinks that there was something a lot bigger behind this. Her theory is that JK did not write the stories and that she might just be an actress that was hired to pretend like she did. She thinks, and a lot of other theorists think, that these books were created by a huge company or an organization where they were like, okay, let's make something that will become a huge movie franchise, we'll sell millions of books, millions of dollars of tickets, and they created the entire thing. And then they thought, oh, this will get a lot of attention and a lot of press if it's written by like a poor woman in England who wrote it on napkins. Oh, that sounds like a good story. And then that happened and it became the biggest thing ever. Now, I personally think it's real. I think she wrote them. I don't think she's an actress. I'm just letting you guys know that before I go into this. So all the JK Rowling heads do not come for me. <laughs> but I still thought this was interesting to think about. So here's what Nina, the director I was talking about earlier, said. Can a person be so productive and commercially successful in a media industry where nothing is left to coincidence? Is it possible that a person can write six thick books that are translated into 55 languages and sell more than 250 million copies in less than 10 years? Is it probable that the stories then get filmed and commercially exploited to the degree seen here without any well thought out strategy or highly professional players behind them? Is it possible that JK Rowling exists? Well, who do they think they're kidding? Not me. She then went on to say that the Nancy Drew books were all written by somebody named Caroline Keene, but Caroline Keene never existed. That was a fake name. Those books were actually written by random writers. And when asked if she thinks that that secret will ever come out, she said, I think the secret behind J.K. Rowling is guarded more strongly than the entrance to the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. I don't know, it is kind of crazy to think about, you know, like what if the books were just written by like big corporations and companies that know exactly what kids want? And what if J.K. is just like, oh fuck, I hope nobody ever finds out. Once again, I don't believe it, but it's interesting. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is an update to the Michaela Instagram theory. Now, a couple weeks ago, I talked about this. There's an Instagram star named Little Michaela, and she's blowing up right now, and nobody knows if she's real or if she's fake. So I talked about in my video the fact that I think it's fake, and I think it's maybe a company behind it or some brand that are creating a girl out of computers to sell all their products. Well, Little Michaela did not like that, and she went on her Twitter and Instagram and said, I'm available for reading lessons whenever you're in doubt, BB. Dessert, not desert. And it's pronounced Michaela. I will emoji. <laughs> so that got me thinking, wait a minute, that's the reaction that like a normal person would send or a kid or somebody who is like pissed and like, why the fuck do they think I'm fake? I'm real, fuck this person. Which made me think, maybe it's not a company. Maybe it is just a normal girl boy, who knows? So I sent a direct message and I said, hey, I did not mean to piss you off. I don't want to start drama. I just thought this was an interesting story. And if you ever want to talk more about it, I'm here. So she wrote back, we talked for a while. And uh, at some point in the future, little Michaela might be popping up in one of my conspiracy videos. And I don't even know what that means because I still don't know if she's real or not. So I'm fucking excited. So if you want that to happen, please go let her know. I'm trying. All right, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed these conspiracy theories today. If you want more conspiracy theory videos and you want me to do them more often, please give me a thumbs up so I know. And also subscribe to my channel right down below because I make new videos every day. And if you want to see all my other conspiracy theory videos, including the one I did a couple weeks ago about Louis Tomlinson's baby, I will put a link to a playlist right at the top of the description below. All right, you little theorists, I will see you tomorrow. Don't believe everything you see. Bye.
What is that? <laughs> what happened to her? Oh my god. That looks like the body of somebody after Peter got done with them. He's like, you know what? I was sucking their blood and then they just ran out and I was still hungry. So I started eating their ass. And then halfway through I was over it. So we're done.